Hello, everybody. It's the morning, and I wanted to give you five tips, five of them, for how you can survive as a software engineer, so stay tuned. It is super early in the morning, but it doesn't matter. Because I have five tips for you, five of them, for how you can survive as a software engineer. So listen up. So my first tip for you guys this morning is, and this is a huge, huge, super important one, is to learn to sell yourself. And I know this applies for a lot more than just software engineering, but the reason I bring it up as one of my top tips for surviving as a software engineer is because it is super important. We are fortunate enough to live in a time that being a software engineer means, or if you can break into this industry, that means you're going to have a lot of job opportunity. There's a ton of demand for software engineers out there. And so learning to sell yourself, especially like in, a, in an interview scenario or just to network and market yourself as a software engineer is huge. There's gonna to be tons of places that you have an opportunity to go work. And the reason I bring this one up specifically is a lot of engineers are really, really terrible at selling themselves. You know, there's a stereotype that your typical engineer is a very awkward person, they're antisocial, they're, you know, introverted, or they don't like dealing with people. One of the super important things for being able to sell yourself as a software engineer is to be able to talk confidently about what you know. People respond well to that sort of confidence. And I mean talk confidently about it. I don't mean be cocky or, or be a know-it-all or pretend things you don't know, but be confident in the things you do know. I've seen like a lot of, a lot of friends, just a lot of other people I know struggle a lot with that aspect of it, but just being confident with, with what they can do and you'd be surprised how far that can take you. And you know, going along with sort of being able to sell yourself is don't be afraid to put yourself out there. Like that is, in my mind, part of selling yourself and putting yourself out there, going out for something that you maybe thought you didn't have a chance for is is huge. Even if you don't end up getting, you know, if, it, if it's a job, even if you don't end up getting that job, it's huge just for developing that confidence and that is going to pay dividends later on in future interviews. Okay, my second top tip, and this is one that is maybe a little bit debatable, maybe a little bit controversial, um, and that is to switch jobs every couple years as a software engineer. Um, you know, I know a lot of people out there probably won't agree with that one. A lot of my fellow software engineers probably will agree with that one just based on their own experience, but it pays to switch in software. And I say that for a couple reasons. Um, the first reason is that Technology is moving crazy fast these days. There are you know, new technologies, new languages, new sort of ideas for how to approach software engineering popping up every couple of years. And if you're not switching, you're kind of siloing yourself into just one job and one sort of maybe language or technology that you've locked yourself into. And it frankly, for the most, most of the stuff out there, it doesn't take more than a couple years to learn that pretty well. And then by that point, you're kind of ready to move on to the next thing, the next, te te next technology and, and learn a little bit more. Okay, so quick disclaimer on the job search thing. I don't necessarily think switching jobs every couple years as a software engineer has to mean that you switch companies as well. A lot of companies out there, and this is true for companies I've worked for in the past, will kind of allow you after a period of time to just go work on other engineering teams. And that can be all you need to ensure that, you know, your skills are, are staying up to par and, and you're learning new things and, and you're growing as an engineer. So yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to go out and interview every couple years or yeah, go to, go to a totally different company every couple years. It just kind of means make sure you're getting the chance to work on new technology as you sort of outgrow what you've been working on. And the other reason you kind of want to switch every few years, especially if you're concerned about your compensation, um, it pays to switch. Like if you switch every couple years, especially in this industry, salaries are going up and up and up for software engineers. And a lot of individual companies aren't keeping up with that. Yeah. So if you're switching, chances are you're going to be able to ratchet up how much you're making pretty, uh, pretty effectively. My third top tip this is my third top tip for surviving as a software engineer is to learn as much as you possibly can from the engineers that you work with that are more senior to you. Um, this one is absolutely huge. 
you know, if you're working at, especially at a lot of tech companies, chances are you are going to be surrounded by engineers who know more than you, or, you know, maybe even other engineers that are sort of at your level of seniority, but that have just had different experiences than you. So ask them a lot of questions, take every advantage you can to work with them because you're going to learn a lot from it. And you can take those skills that you learn from them elsewhere and, you know, hopefully give back a little bit to them too. try and educate each other and learn together. Um, you know, I think some of the best experiences, engineering experiences I've had work-wise have been working with other just super curious, kind of like-minded people that we've gotten, you know, we've had the ability to learn a ton from each other and that has reaped benefits for all of us. Yeah, and I guess just kind of going along with that idea of learning as much as you can from the senior engineers that you work with is that your job security comes from the skills you have and, and what you know. So long as you're able to keep your skills up and keep what you, what you know in the software world up, you're going to have the ability to go work at a lot of different places. There's going to be a lot of opportunity out there for you. Tip number four for surviving as a software engineer is to learn to communicate with your business users. And this is another huge one that most engineers invest basically zero time into. And it's a shame because if you do, you're, I think, really going to stand out. You're really going to shine as an engineer. Um, like I said, because most engineers just don't bother to do this at all. You know, and I know I've fallen victim to this a lot of the times as engineer engineers we kind of like to just sit on our computer and code and not be bothered and um, the reality of it is if you're working for a company you are going to have to work with the business users you're going to have to be thinking about stuff like how am i providing value to them being able to explain challenging or complicated software concepts to business users clearly and coherently will take you extremely extremely far you know, and I know that one of working with business users can be frustrating as an engineer, but if you're looking to sort of work your way up the company or move into roles that are going to be a lot more dealing with people type problems instead of just coding all day, then it's something you're gonna have to do eventually. And tip number five for surviving as a software engineer, my fifth tip, and this arguably is the most important one, and it's crazy to me, um, how many people or other engineers I know just don't pay attention to this at all, and that is to keep your LinkedIn profile up to date. That is LinkedIn is social media for business people. You should absolutely 100% be on there if you are a software engineer, professional software engineer. Um, you're maybe you're interviewing or looking for jobs, or even if you already have a job and you're just you want to keep your um, social profile up to date to make sure people know what you're working on. Do it, invest in it, it's worthwhile, it doesn't take that long. Yeah, keeping your LinkedIn up to date, super, super important as a professional engineer. That's where other job recruiters are going to go to do searches when they're looking to fill a role. Um, you know, they'll probably be, be searching by keywords related to the types of things you work on. So keep that up to date, put that stuff on there, take a good picture of yourself, put that stuff on there. Is LinkedIn the size of something like YouTube? No, but it's only a small amount of effort on your part and it can really open a lot of doors. I guess just my own anecdotal experience has been that basically every job I've gotten has come from a LinkedIn referral or a LinkedIn connection. Just messaging somebody on LinkedIn and saying, hey, I'm interested interested in this, you know, in X role. Can you uh, give me an introduction introduction to this person? A lot of the big tech company interviews that I've had have come from LinkedIn too. You know, I'll go ahead and just Google like Netflix recruiter or Uber recruiter and just find as many of them as I can, connect with as many of them as I can and just message them and say, hey, I'm interested in interviewing at your company. Can you set me up with an interview? And it doesn't always work out, but it's kind of a numbers game. You know, if you do it 50 times, somebody is bound to respond and say, yeah, sure, let's get you set up. And I mean, honestly, that's how I got my Netflix interview, how I got my Uber interview, um, among a couple others. Yeah, putting just a tiny bit of effort into your LinkedIn and making it look like you care about your professional profile will take you a long way as an engineer, especially given how in demand these jobs are and how frequently recruiters are using it as a tool to find engineers to join their company. Yeah, and that's basically it, guys. Those were my five tips for how to survive as a software engineer. And I can guarantee if you're doing those, you are going to do very well for yourself in the industry. Um, you'll be making a lot of connections. You'll have a lot of kind of doors open for you, a lot of opportunity out there. So, 
yeah, do them. Just to kind of recap what those five were. The first one was learn to sell yourself as a software engineer. That one is huge. The second one, switch jobs every couple of years. It pays to do that. It is, it's worth your time. You'll learn, you'll ratchet up your compensation. Um, the third tip was absorb as much as you can, as much information as you can from the senior engineers on your team and sort of learn and grow together. That'll take you very, very far. The fourth tip was learn to communicate with your business users. Practice those soft skills. Practice being able to communicate because that will take you really far. And the final one is, of course, keep your LinkedIn up to date. It's minimal effort and it can open up a lot of doors for you in the future. Yeah, so those were my five tips, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know if you wanna see more videos like this. I really enjoyed making this one. These are, you know, sort of things that I've thought a lot about and have just helped me a lot in my career as a software engineer. So yeah, please hit subscribe if you liked everything and let me know if you wanna see more videos like this.